This episode of Postcards from DCT is generously sponsored by Hauser's Pharmacy and Home Healthcare. Thinking about your health? Think Hauser's Pharmacy and Home Healthcare. They are proud to offer a full-service pharmacy to individuals in Dunville, Hagersville, St. Catharines, and Hamilton. Their pharmacy team can help you with medication reviews, specialty compounding, vaccinations and immunizations, non-urgent primary care, and more. If getting around is getting difficult for you, they also offer Houses Home Health Care, your partner in mobility. A mobility specialist can help make personalized recommendations to help you get moving or can assist in making your home safer for you. If you already have a mobility device, their service department can help you with repairs and preventative care of your device. Housers is proud to offer free delivery to anything in store, including prescriptions. Visit them online at houserspharmacy.com or follow them on Facebook. Hi, and welcome back to Postcards from DCT. Today, in Close to the Curtain, Claire will be talking about and to directors. Directors are one of the many key parts of the live theatre performance. If actors bring their individual characters to life, it's the director that brings the larger story to life. And in her dramatic moments, Ellie talks about the beginnings of modern stage direction. Enjoy. What's that you got? Oh, it's a script. I'm on the play reading committee and Ellie asked me to read a few so that when we return to stage we have a good one picked already. Cool. What's that one about? It's about this theater group that ends up in isolation after a rampant virus hits. Now somehow half of the group, about 25, end up in a barn when everything gets locked down. Oh yeah, that sounds so implausible. <laughs> well, the plot's not the only thing that's implausible. Out of the 25 that are stuck in the barn, only five of them are under 50. I mean, I haven't read the whole thing yet, but I'm kind of expecting zombies. I, and I don't think more than seven will survive. <laughs> so, where is this supposed to take place anyway? Oh, Northern Ontario. Okay. That moves it from implausible to impossible. No way does a theater group in Northern Ontario have 25 actors. We're in a well-populated area. We can't get that many. Yeah, I know, but you know what? I might recommend it anyways, because there's some really good characters. Like, there's this woman, Margaret, who thinks everything is a double entendre. She's absolutely hilarious. And then the youngest ones in the group, they're all super into these brothers called Grimm, who write really, really dark stories for children. I'm really expecting zombies. Yeah, I don't know how we could fill a cast like that. It's getting harder and harder to find actors, you know? Maybe you should look into something with no more than, ooh, say five cast members. I think the one you're reading is kind of out of our reach. Yeah, but Jordan, zombies. Good lord, woman, grow up. Fine. <clears throat> In this week's episode of Close to the Curtain, we're going to take a look at directors, some of whom may, and may not, like to direct zombies. Claire! Oh, all right. Of all the creative positions I've held, <laughs> thank goodness Margaret isn't here. In live theater, directing is my favorite because as a director, you get a chance to shape the whole picture the way you wish to see it. You get to work with talented experience, and if you're lucky, you get to mentor fresh new faces who need your guidance. The best part is, at the end of the process, you get to see the whole play as part of the audience, and you never get that as an actor, because as an actor, you're either on stage or you're off stage. You're either in it or you're out of it. But as the director, you've been living that play for months, even before rehearsal started. It's part of you, but at the end, you also get to be part of the audience. You get the entire experience. So, 
When opening night comes, you might think you have a well-molded piece of work, but after that first performance, you always are reminded that living theater is a live thing. It's liquid, so it's never the same thing twice. Only as a director do you get the privilege of seeing and feeling that from both sides of the curtain. Now, here's Jean Furlong and Maureen Jones to share some of their best memories of directing. I hope you enjoy it. I love directing. I think that's because I like being in charge of things and telling people what to do. And, and usually uh, I could humor them along so they mostly did what I asked them to do. I think some of the joys of directing was watching it start from, from a, a time of a, a mess, basically, when nobody really knew what they were doing and you had to tell them all where to stand and organize the whole stage management stuff. And, and, the, uh, and, and then once they, once they started to learn their lines, oh my goodness, get rid of those books and let's really act and let's really put it all together. And the finished products were uh, amazing to see. And, it's when, and when, then when you got the audience really enjoying it, yeah, I mean, it was, it, there's nothing to compare to that. So yeah, directing was one of my joys in life. I directed many plays and enjoyed every one of them. Overall, the producer and the director work extremely close together. Theatre coming together is a whole lot of moving parts all at once and so we have to be very succinct in getting those parts all together in order to put on a good play. It is fun. It is a team effort and with all those moving parts, I gotta say, it's more than fun. On a personal note, I remember the smell of the theatre, the excitement of a show coming together, the joy of watching an actress or actor uh, do something just a little extra for their part. That, you can't beat that feeling. The pleasure of a seamstress completing just the right costume and the bonds that are built between the actors, actresses and all of the team members working towards a common task. I remember young people developing in ways that they would never have been able to do because they stretched themselves through live theater. My own sons took on the tasks of technical directors in lighting and sound, and my one son continues in film today. Live theater is different than TV and movies. It is live and therefore is fluid and extremely interesting. I just want to tell you, the first play I ever directed was Play It Again, Sam. It didn't go all together smoothly. In the last two weeks, our main character had to quit to get a job, and we had a young Terry M. take over and with only two weeks to go, and he was phenomenal. And one to remember that I directed was called Waiting for the Parade by John Merle. And this is one that took us back to war times and people waiting for their loved ones to come home. It was highly emotional for me and for the cast. It was very exciting to do. The funniest one I ever did was An Evening of Culture with Mark Landon Smith. This one used every carpenter skills you would want. Um, we had to have breaking props, we had to have stools that fell over, and a whole wall came down. So it was good fun to watch our carpenter skills come together for that. Theater is just plain fun. Have fun. Come with us. In 93, I directed um, The Melville Boys by Norm Foster. And that was a really fun experience and, you know, getting to cast that. And, yeah, I think I got some, like, a really great crew on that, some great uh, cast members. And it was a, a, bit, of a, a bit of a different play uh, for the group. Um, at the time, there was just, like, there was a lot of slapstick kind of stuff, which was really fun. Um, my main thing was wanting to find a Canadian playwright. And so when I read the script, and I was just reading scripts um, as part of the committee to, you know, find a play. And when I found this one, I just, you know, fell in love with the Melville Boys, and I thought, this is such a great play. And I said, I want to direct it, um, which was a bit of a jump for me because I'd never done that either. 
Um, but yeah, it all came together and yeah, it was just very rewarding uh, to do that. So um, from that point on, um, while I was doing the directing for Melville Boys, I wound up moving away from town. And so I still made the trek in uh, as often as we did for um, rehearsals and then putting on the performances. And then, um, yeah, I just got so tied up with work and other things going on that I, I didn't get a chance to get back to town for many performances. But, uh, yeah, a few years back, I started to get back into it. And, yeah, just really enjoying uh, seeing the shows that the group has put on. Now you know a little bit about what it is to be a director. Maybe you want to direct a play yourself. Anything is possible. Community theater affords people like you and me the opportunity to do things we had never even considered before, let alone planned on. Now prepare to be educated with. The role of a director to any theatrical production is vital. They bring their interpretation of a dramatic piece to the table and work to present their overall vision with the designers, actors, musicians, anyone involved with the creation of the performance. Did you know that for centuries in the Western theatre tradition, performances were not specifically directed? A theatre troupe was generally led by an actor-manager. These were senior actors who would choose the play and stage it, as well as acting in it. This changed when a German nobleman, the Duke of saxe meiningen organized an acting company to tour in 1874. His work focused on the use of historically accurate and authentic costuming and props, and a set that was more than just a painted backdrop. He insisted that all actors attend rehearsals and meticulously blocked the scenes for both principals and extras. He encouraged them to be as realistic and natural as possible in both movement and voice. His unity of vision for a production and his goal of creating realism on stage were showcased across Europe as the company toured extensively between 1874 and 1890. Playwright Henrik Ibsen, the father of modern drama, and actor-director Konstantin Stanislavski, the father of what we've come to refer to as method acting, were both heavily influenced by the Meiningen productions, the work of the man who was, arguably, the first theatrical director. This has been L.E.B. of the DCT, bringing you another dramatic moment. So, did you ever set a camera up on a tripod? You just, we call them sticks. Call them sticks if you want to be part of the cool gang. And then you set the manual focus to the chair where your interviewer is going to sit with the utmost care. And then you never check it again for the rest of the day because, hey, neither the camera nor the chair nor the talent is moving and then you realize when you review the footage later that maybe you should have checked the focus on every single shot yeah oops shut up charles <laughs>